right, so uh, tell us about your history. My history? Yeah. Uh, Do you believe this? Girl, this is all for you. You're on the top of the charts. You're a star. Well, at first, when we realized that she had talent, she was she had a beautiful voice, even at eight years old. We decided that she needed de singing lessons in order to sing properly. And we didn't know anything or how to, to go about it. We asked her dance. She was taking dancing lessons, and uh, the dancing teacher had a cousin who was an opera singer, and she gave lessons. But she didn't really have any students that were as young as I was. But she um, did take me on at eight years old. I remember my parents um, always telling the story that she really wasn't so excited to take on such a young student because she didn't know if I would be disciplined enough to really learn. But she heard her sing and she said, I, I think I could teach her, which she did. We had a lot of fun at high school. She was in every play she was in Battle of the Bands. She was just always out with the music. I would say I, I, was, I was definitely an average teenager. I was a cheerleader. I went to a lot of the school functions. I was in the school plays. I actually wasn't comfortable on stage when I first started. My first memory of that was actually at a, my first singing recital. I remember when people clapped for me at the end. I cried because I was so... Um, I guess it was emotional, and I just wasn't ready for people to, to give me applause like that. I didn't. I wasn't that kind of kid that was a show kid and really had like an outgoing personality. And I always remember my father always wanted me to smile when I was on stage when I was singing. And I really, it doesn't come easy. I had to like learn how to do that as I got older. My husband was really gung ho on getting people to hear her. Uh, he, we record, had somebody record her and he would, he would play for anybody. If the man walked across the room and he had a tag, the RCA or any kind of label of any sort, he would go after them until they listened to her. And everybody was impressed with her voice, but nobody knew what or how to promote her. My dad was a very big influence um, from the beginning. He always wanted people to hear my voice without me actually having to sing live to hear them. So it was his idea really to put my voice on a record or back then we had tapes also. So um, he was always an influence. My mother also, we were a very close family. They always had my best interests at heart. We're just a very close family even to this day. Next on Spotlight on Teens, we have an interview with 15-year-old Alicia Itkin, who has joined the rock group The Babysitters. We'll tell you how they got their name, and we'll show you a clip of one of her performances. Well, we made tapes. We made a lot of tapes. We had this band. Uh, they were older than she was because she was so young, so they called themselves The Babysitters. Um, the Babysitters was the last band that I was in before I really started to record. Um, they were a bunch of guys that were probably had to be more than 10 years older than me at the time. They, we were a band. They had a bunch of original songs that they wrote and I sang them and they kind of featured that I was young and they were older. And we used to practice in my house 
a, a whole band and everything in, in my living room when I was younger in my parents' house. Yeah, what kind of music does, do the babysitters play? Do, is it different from Rage? Because Rage was a Rage was a, a, a rock group, and there was no doubt about it. Um, do they differ any from um, from the babysitters? In the babysitters, we do rock. We do um, like a, a dance music, a little towards disco mm -hmm. with a beat. Disco with a beat? Didn't disco have that steady beat? Yeah, well, rock mm -hmm. with a beat, you know, a steady beat. Her voice came out and it was really good, and we were able to get somebody at Vanguard, which was Mark Berry, to listen to the tape. He did not like any of the background stuff, any of the music itself, but he liked her voice. And he had a pre-recorded some of the song All Night Passion, and he needed a singer. And I guess the two matched up and it worked out for him. together I would say three years pretty much we did um, my first album titled Alicia it had all my passion two turns on and baby talk those were the singles on it and then we recorded another album called night walking he found the song all night passion and we went into the studio in actually it was in 1983 in the summer of 83 August I remember we recorded all my passion that was my first um, single that we released I didn't really know that it was even gonna definitely be a record, but at the time we had the intention of it coming out. It took months. We went from August all the way to February till it finally got played on the radio. That was the longest six months of my life, my parents' life, um, but it was really the beginning of everything. Disco 92 WKTU, we are in a half hour of music, and don't forget, Coming up at 11 o'clock tonight in Studio 92. When I first started with Lonely Passion, I had that one single, and back then uh, clubs were very vital to your success. The first time I heard my song on the radio, I remember perfectly clear because uh, my producer ended up calling us, my house, and saying that I was going to be on the radio that night. It was being played on uh, 92 KTU and it was a DJ, Carlos de Jesus, he had a show and it came on at eight o'clock and he played it at 8.01 and we were going crazy in my house. We couldn't believe it. My mother, my father, my sister, um, we were all screaming at the radio. Back then we, you were able to tape off the radio so I even taped it off the radio. It was the highlight of Oh, my 1984, that's for sure. Alicia heißt die. Ich sage euch Tschüss ins Haus. Bis zur nächsten Woche. All Night Passion. different places. I did travel abroad. I went to France and did a tour and Holland. Um, I did a lot of clubs here in the States on, on the East Coast and I did go a little bit to the West Coast and in between but most of my memories I, I think of are in New York and the clubs that I did here. And living here I guess it meant a lot to me because I grew up here and people that I knew wanted to go to those clubs so that was uh, very important to me. After All Night Passion, I ended up, um, I had a second single called Two Turns On. Um, that came out in 1985, in the summer of 1985, I think June it came out. I had a second album out on RCA in 1987, which was a big deal for me because I recorded 10 songs. They were all new songs, um, songs that I loved, really, mo most of them. I, when I still hear them, they just bring me back to the days of listening to those songs and um, they were special to me. And then in uh, 1990 I got the opportunity to record another album on MCA, 
another 10 songs. This time it was with a different producer. I went out to California to record all of the songs. I spent two weeks there, and then I came home for a little while because I was in college then, and I went back another two-week session and recorded the rest of the album, and it was a different experience. It was a different producer, different songwriters, uh, you know, a whole new experience. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I really had an incredible time. So. You will not forget Baby Talk came out, that was the first opportunity I had to do a video, so that one was fun because um, I was allowed to invite people that I knew to that video. They sort of wanted to make it sort of like a, a club scene, so I could remember we invited everybody from my high school, and a lot of people did show up to that, so that was a fun thing when I was younger. And um, as I got older, I did a, a couple of more videos. I did one for Into My Secret, which was on my second album, and then I also did a video for Bounce Back, which was my favorite video. It's time to make another start. Bounce back into love. What's this not enough? Bounce back, free talk. When the going is getting rough. At the time, I didn't know that the weather conditions were going to be really horrible, but horrible meaning they prepared me for everything, but it ended up being so windy that. They did my hair and my makeup for the video shoot. And when I went outside, it was so windy that I came back in and I think I cried all my makeup off and they had to redo it because I never expected it to be so windy. I was lucky enough on two occasions to have uh, two of my songs in a movie. So one was called Do You Dream About Me? And it was in a movie called Mannequin. Oh, oh no, I can't. Sometimes I watch you while you're sleeping, later. Sometimes I see you hold your pillow tight. After my third album, I had a couple of singles out, and one of my singles was a song called Superstar. That was on the soundtrack of a movie called Superstar, and that they ran at the end of the movie when the credits rolled, and I was so um, proud again, because I, I think I was lucky twice to have songs in movies. mom of three kids, a stay-at-home mom, busy with them. My kids are busy with sports and dance and anything to keep them busy after school, so that takes up most of my life right now. Sometimes I get to go to some of her shows and it's really fun because I get to like hear like all of her songs and it's like and everybody like knows me and I don't like like in the crowd and I don't, but I don't know them. When I was in um, kindergarten, I learned sign language though, and this and I and this means love. So I told her every time I go to one of her shows, we're like this, and I mean I and it means love you. And what, so she did it to me one of, in one of her shows, and then I did it and I did this back. I love yeah. I go to my friends' houses and. They're like, oh my god, your mom, she, like, she's a singer, and I love her songs. And then I think of their moms, and I was like, oh, like, they're not as, like, you know, they don't have, they don't do what my mom does. And I was like, well, that, that's cool that, I'm, that my mom does that. You know what, they don't ask so much about my history. They're more interested in what's going on now. But they know I'm a singer, they know all of it happened before they were born. And uh, sometimes, once in a while, we'll meet people that know me from a long time ago, or maybe um, they have seen me perform at a show so they, they get to see what my life was like a little bit when, when I was busy singing before they were born. I never really feel like I'm somebody, to be perfectly honest. I think I was lucky to have a record out and lucky that people heard it. Um, it's funny to feel 
like people know you when you don't know them, but um, I definitely remember in high school even that people would be like, oh, she's the one that, that sings that song, you know? So growing up, maybe that happens a little more often. It doesn't happen so much anymore. I don't really brag about myself. If somebody knows I sing, maybe they have heard it through a friend, through my kids maybe, through my family, my husband. But um, I don't really feel like, uh, like a somebody. I feel like I'm lucky that I had a career in this business. I feel like it's a very tough business and I feel like I was lucky to have uh, records out and for people all over the world to really know my music. But um, to, to say I'm a somebody, I don't know. I'm not cocky, so I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in to Alicia Itkin. Alicia Itkin, call those record companies. She'll be on our show a couple of times. I want her to get a nice recording. Thank you very much.